I click on help, is go over to the left hand side here and click in the left margin speed bar. When I click on the speed bar, there's three sources that will help. One is the entire manual that I'll show you in a moment. The other is if you're just looking a quick video to search by the MLS number, which we're going to cover in just a second. And then, of course, the speed bar shortcuts. You can, once you get your groove and you search a particular area all the time or a particular criteria all the time, you can actually save your speed bar shortcuts and go back into them and just place them and the results come back up just like that, all the recent criteria. So these are really good points to go through. So I'm going to click on the speed bar help first. And that opens up to my speed bar documentation and it's six pages of information. When you click on that, of course, it takes us to our speed bar user documentation. And here's your syntax. So it gives you the field names that you can utilize, tells you how to type it in, and gives you an example, and then the results. So again, you want to try to not sway from this. You want to use this as a guiding point. So we know we can, we're going to do all of this today. So we know we can search by MLS number, address, search date. Put in a status, you can search by status and status date, property type, the price, how many beds, how many baths, or you can do a combination of beds and baths, square footage, style, how to put in your MLS area number, or if you wanted to type in the city, how to search for other agents and open houses. So those are the fields that you can use currently to search. I'm also going to show you one that's relatively new, and what I mean by new is I mean like maybe three weeks ago, which is the school district and the zip code we're going to search for. As I scroll down, you also see if you wanted to see how to type certain examples in, this is the key to show you exactly how you would type that in just so. So we're going to cover all of this today for you, all six pages of this. So just make sure though that when you're ready to utilize it, don't just wing it. Make sure you actually print this out so that you have your guide with you. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And remember, I found this under the help guide in Real Compound Line 3 under speed bar. And I simply clicked on speed bar help. There's a video here for you for MLS numbers, and if you want to customize your own speed bar criteria, it shows you how to do that with the shortcuts here. So I'm going to go ahead and click back on the home page. And the second source that you have for help with the speed bar is in the speed bar itself. It's always going to be at the top center of your page, any page that you go to. And the other second part of the help would come under this gray little question mark here. So when I click on that, it opens up to the speed bar. Again, I could click that link and the, uh, the page that I just showed you with the six pages of documentation, that's linked to here as well if you didn't want to go into help. But as you start to scroll down, this is just a quick run of how to type a couple of things in. So definitely when you're ready, and notice the shorthand tips, keep it simple. You always want to do that with your speed bar, always, okay? Otherwise, it's no longer speedy. <laughs> so the first thing that we're going to start off with is talking about MLS numbers. I'm sure most of you have obviously discovered this, but I just want to go through it again just to make sure that everyone is comfortable doing this. You can always type in just one MLS number by going up to the speed bar. And you can either click on your magnifying glass or you can hit enter, either one, and your results will come up. Now if you've changed your default, it will be something different than the grid single line. Know that when you get your results, if you wanted to click the MLS number, you could to get the full listing. But if you click the down arrow for display, 
you have all the different options that you know that you have here to view the property. If there's pictures, you simply click on the photo and you can scroll through all the different photos to get your information. If you wanted to go back and look at the full listing, there's always an MLS number or you could choose the option that you want by clicking on the report that you want it to and get the picture of the map, some other different things here too. Okay. Now what if I wanted to do multiple MLS numbers? Very easy to do. Everything is separated with the space when using the speed bar. No commas, maybe a dash ever so often, I'll, and I'll go through that today, and also maybe a decimal point here or there, but no commas. No commas. Commas are like kryptonite to the speed bar. So I'm simply going to type in my MLS numbers, separate them with the space, and you can keep lining them up. It, it doesn't matter how many you have. If you've got the number, you type it in. Even if it looks like you're running out of space, it will shift and move for you. And again, as many as you type in is fine to separate them with the space. And you could either click the magnifying glass or you could hit enter, either one, and your results come up for you. And once they come up, again, you have the choice to click on the MLS numbers or you can click the down arrow for your display and change it into whatever report that you wish. I happen to choose the summary so I can see all of them at once. Or again, you can go back up to the display and change it to a full with photos if you wish to. Totally up to you. Or a full with map. Just depends on what you're looking for. So that's how you search by MLS numbers. Next, we're going to talk about searching for an address, which can be a little daunting. It, of course, just depends on how public records filled it in, if at all it was changed on the listing. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how it can be done. Um, you, this is one that you definitely want to keep as simplistic as possible. So before we start talking about address, because sometimes you might not know the address or you think you know it and it's not coming up, so you might want to go with just the street name. So going back up to the top for the speed bar, let's say I did not really know the address per se, but I did know the street. No north, south, east, or west. Stay away from those. Use asterisks in the place of things that could be interchangeable, like for instance, if it's east, I don't know if it's an E or east is spelled out. So I won't use either. I'll put an asterisk in a space and then no space and put the next word. Or St. Clair. Is it S-T or S-A-I-N-T? I'll put an asterisk in a space first and let it go. I won't use drive, lane, road, courtway, boulevard, avenue. Even if it's part of the street name, it's not needed, so I'll leave those off. So you just type in what you know. So for the first example, I'll type in a street that I've seen put in many different ways. And when I type in Winder, everything comes up. Okay, and every MLS number that was ever listed on that street will, since 1995 will come up for me. So as I'm scrolling through, you'll see all the different types, all the different statuses, all the different ways, of course, that the address was put in, and there's tons of them here. So it go, this is almost like a history search for the street. Of course, I could pair it if I wanted to really just zone in on an area. I could separate that and maybe perhaps put in the type of property that I'm looking for. So I'm going to search for condos. And when I hit enter, notice that my results change. So now I'm not looking for any residential or multifamily, just condos on that street, again, with all different statuses. Perhaps I was looking for something that was active on that street, still not knowing the address. The code for active is ACTV, not the word active, the code active, ACTV. And when I hit enter, 
out of all of those results, there's only one that is currently active. And this would probably be my result. Let's try that again. I'm going to go back to home. And now I am going to type in a particular address. Now, there's a different, couple different ways I could do it. I could stop here and put an asterisk, and my results would come up. But now I'm going to show you how to search for more than one word and a name. So I'll put a space, and the name of the street is Sandbar. When I hit Enter, everything comes up. Now, take a peek at this. One agent put it in a Sandbar without the lane. Another agent put it in a South Sandbar Lane, and then the others just put in Sandbar Lane. I just searched Sandbar. So sometimes when you're searching for a street, you want to keep it as simple as possible because I would have missed out on South Sandbar Lane. I would, I would never think to search for it unless that was the street. And I definitely, if I put the lane in, I would never get the Sandbar here. So again, just by putting in just very little criteria, that information comes up for you. And once again, you can click on MLS numbers, which you can see they range in years here, because it's a history, very much like a history search for this address or street. Or I can click the down arrow and change it into whatever report I, or display that I would like to look at. So keeping it extremely simple with addresses. The next uh, option that I want to show you is actually through the zip code and the school district. Remember, those are the two latest ones that have been added in. And um, of course, we like to search by zip code if we know it to lock down on a particular area. Same with school district. Little couple of tricks of how to do it. So. In this particular one, I'm going to show you what's active in a particular area, and then the next, I'm going to show you what's sold in a particular area and how to type that information in. So I happen to be looking to see what is active in Farmington Hills. And the Farmington Hills zip code that I'm, I'm going to narrow it down by the zip code instead of typing in Farmington Hills. We'll do that the city next. So I'm going to put in ACTV because I'm looking for actives a space. I'm looking to see what's active residential. So the code for residential is RS, not R-E-S, R-S. And again, you'll find that in the speed bar help documentation. I'll put a space. And I'm simply going to put ZIP for zip code, space, and put in my zip code that I know. Yes, I could continue to put in different zip codes. I would just separate them with the space and add the next and the next and the next. And when I hit enter, this is everything that is residential that is currently active in Farmington, in this Farmington Hill zip code. And I end up with 34 results. So I'm going to, number one, go over to the far right here where it has my display. And before I change it to something that shows pictures or what have you, I'm going to click the down arrow and at least put 50 per page so I get all my results on one page. If you notice, because I didn't specify a particular uh, price point range or any other features, we'll do that later, it pulls everything. So I have some leases in here as well. So I'm going to sort by price by taking my mouse and clicking over the word price. And it puts it all in order for me. You can, again, sort by any of these particular headers. Now if I'd like to, I could go up to display and, again, change it to the summary report and see all of the results. I could scroll up to the top again, and I could click on the display and go to my full large with map and rollouts if I wanted to look at property by property and click next and previous to move along. 
But I've done all of that with simple criteria by putting in ACTV for active, residential, and the zip code. And I get everything. Leases, all the way up into things that are act, uh, for sale, that are active. Now, let's talk about looking up sold. And I'm going to use the same zip code. I'm going to go up to the top again and click on Home. And when I'm searching for sold, I've noticed that I have, this is one that I need to put in a certain sequence. So I'm going to start by putting in SOLD, and it doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. So I'll put in sold, space, SD for status date. You need, if you're looking for sold, you're going to need that SD to go right along with it. Space, and then I'll just go 30 days back so not to get so many results. Zero, representing today, dash three, zero. I'll put a space. And I'm going to put in ZIP space 48334. And when I hit enter, this is everything that has sold in the last 30 days and the zip code of 48334, which happens to be this area of Farmington Hills. Everything that sold, from residential to condos to what have you. Again, if I wanted to specify Residential, I could put RS or I could put CO for condo, MF for multifamily, you name it. And again, I could sort by whatever means I'd like to. But this is showing me everything that is sold. So we know in the last 30 days, 16 properties have sold. Two were leases, the rest were actually sales in this area. I'm going to scroll up again click on help, and let's talk about searching school district. So I'm looking to see, I'm going to go on the other side of town here. I'd like to see what's active in Gross Point school districts to purchase. So I'm going to go into the speed bar yet again, and since again I'm looking for actives, I'll put ACTV, space, I'm going to put RS for residential, and the school district that I'm looking for, again, is Gross Point. So I'm going to put in S-C-H-O-O-L space. And I'm going to put in Gross and spell it out, literally. Gross Point. And when I hit Enter, notice how it says, okay, which one are you actually looking for? Sometimes it, if it's not sure and has a little bit of criteria, it will, when you hit enter, it will try to help you out and say, okay, which one do you really mean? I mean the first one, the school district of Gross Point. And if you hover over it, the rest of the information that's kind of cut off, you'll be able to see that. And when I click on that, up comes my results. So sometimes let the system help you. It can remember only so much. So, and notice that a little bit of everything comes up now. You might be noticing different cities. Yes, because this part of the city actually belongs to this school district. As we all know, sometimes school districts are split between different cities. So again, I'm going to go ahead and click that down arrow with 250 results and click on to get as many as I like per page. And then I could sort by whatever, it is, whatever means I like. Or if I really want to be in the city, one of the cities of Gross Point, I can actually click on the city now. And it sorts it for me. So here's all the Gross Points. Here's the farms, the park. So whatever territory that this particular school district, there's the shores, whatever it is actually pulling up for me is fine. Now, there's quite a bit on Harper Woods. I really want any city in Gross Point, so let me show you how you can delete certain properties from the, even though you started with the speed bar, this is a great time to show you how to manipulate the results that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and select the Harper Woods here.
and one more, I think. Great. Okay, so I've highlighted, and I really don't want these particular ones in my search. So after I highlight them, I'm going to come on down to the bottom, and I'm going to click on Refine. When I click on Refine, if I only wanted to keep the ones in Harper Woods that belonged to Gross Point School Districts, I would choose Narrow, and it would only let me focus on the ones I've selected. But in this case, I'd like to remove those. So I've selected them, and I'm going to click on Discard. And when I click on Discard, my results change, and now I don't have any of the Harper Woods in my focus. Now I'm just looking at everything that happens to be in Gross Point City, what happens to be in Gross Point uh, School District. Now by chance, if you wanted those back, Notice that your uh, bar at the bottom that I clicked on Discard, it now gives me a chance to correct myself if I want it to. I could click on Undiscard, and they all will come back for me. And there's all the Harper Woods again. Okay. Now, when you're using the refine button and you're narrowing or discarding, make sure to wor work with your results that you go back to actions. And when you go back to actions now, you'll be able to check off anything you'd like, print or email it or put it in a CMA or get directions or any of the options that you have down at the bottom. You could even save your criteria if you wish to. So just because you use the speed bar and you get tons of results does not mean that you cannot refine it, if you will, refine the results, if you will. I can also add to this, with 250 results, maybe I want this school district in a certain price range. I could go back up to the top, although I'm looking at my results, I could go back up to the top and refine it a little more. By clicking right next to Gross Point, I'm going to put a space, and now I, I would like homes that are about 250 or more. So I'll put a dollar sign and put 250 plus. This will give me two homes that are 250,000 or more that happen to be in Gross Point School District. And when I hit enter, my results fluctuate and I get 142 matches. And again, I could sort by whatever I wanted. We first started with 250 just by searching Gross Point, and now we're back down to the 250. We, I put in 250 for a, or more for a price range, and we're down to 142. I could further add in beds and baths, which is what I'm going to show you how to do next. Beds, baths, range in prices, square footage, just the few things that you can put in for the criteria. So going back to the two new added ones, if you want to search by the zip code, you're going to add in zip, space, and whatever zip code that is. And again, if you want it more than one zip code, you would put a space and put the next and the next and the next so that you could get the area that you wish. When it comes to school district, the code for searching school district in the speed bar is putting in school, space, and whatever school district that is. For instance, although I'm looking up Gross Point now, maybe I want to change that and come back on the west side of town. I can come back up to the top. I can backspace that Gross Point out, and now I'll type in Birmingham, if I spell it right. Hit Enter, and now I just have to be patient. My screen will s switch, and I'm still searching the school district of Birmingham, and I have 278 results. So you can use your speed bar and go back up to it and switch the criteria anytime you want, as long as you know the codes. So I easily switch from Gross Point to Birmingham School Districts just by going up to the speed bar and putting in newer criteria. Same price range. Let's talk about putting in actual criteria as far as beds, baths, square footage, if you wish, in certain areas. I'm going to go ahead and click back on the home page. 
Now, this particular customer wants to be uh, in West Bloomfield. And they're ranging between oh, 400 to 600,000, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. So very quick criteria. I'll go back up into my speed bar, and again, they're looking to buy. So I'll put AC TV space RS for residential space, and I'm going to put in the area which I'm, I'm going to use my five-digit area codes. I could type out the name of the city, but I'm, I'm going to use the codes. Sometimes, actually, numbers work better than letters, but you can search that way. So I'll put ACTV RS, put in my area. I'm going to put in my dollar range, amount range. Now, I could do 400 plus, but they do have a stopping point, so I'll go up to 600. I'll put a dash there. I will not put an additional dollar sign. Putting the dollar sign before the first number is the code, and I'll end it with 600. I'll put a space. And now they're looking for three bedrooms, at least three bedrooms, and two and a half baths. Now, when it comes to typing in, bedrooms and bathrooms. You have to type it in just so. Bedrooms always first. Even if you make a mistake and put the bathrooms first, it's going to read it as though you were putting bedrooms first. So bedrooms first, then baths. So I'm looking for at least three or more, so that would be a three plus space, and I'm looking for two or more baths, that would be a two plus. When I hit enter, here are my results. So I kind of locked myself in with the price range, but these are the five properties that came up that have that are in that price range in Bloomfield Hills, and it's still giving me what I want, three or more bedrooms and at least two or more bath and laughs. Let's go for a little few more results here. I'm going to go ahead and click back on Home. And what if I were looking in the same area, and it's not so much the bed and baths, but it is the square footage. I need a certain range of square footage. So I'll go back and put in the same area. And to search for square footage, you can either put in the starting point, which if I were doing 1,500 or, 1500 or more, I put in 1,500 SQFT. But if I wanted to do a range, but I hit enter, here are all the properties in Bloomfield Hills that are between, that are currently active, that are between 2,200 square feet and 4,000 square feet. So sometimes if the square footage is what they're after, this is a great way to put in the area, put in what, uh, if it's on the market or off, and then put in your range of square footage. Or I could simply backspace that out and start with 2,200 plus SQFT. Notice, don't forget your plus or it'll just give you the 2200. And when you hit enter, now I have 39 results that at least start with 2200 or more. We're all the way up into the 8000s now, so. Let's talk about searching for leases as well. Notice that I've just been putting in actual things to uh, to buy, but if I wanted to lease, I could do that too with the price ranges. So I'll click back on Home, and again, I'm going to search for properties that are leasing for at least, um, oh, we'll keep it simple. We'll do 1100 or more. So I will start with ACTV. I'm going to, in this case, I, I'll be interested to see what's for sale, I'm sorry, what's for lease that's condo or residential. You could put in RS for residential or CO for condo, but in this particular case, I'll wait till last to see what we have. I'll put in the dollar amount, and to search for leases, 
I want at least, at le well, let's take it up a little bit. Let's do at least um, 1.5. So I'll put 1.5 plus, and then I'll put in my area. There, a few more results that I was looking for. So notice that I can do that, and I do end up getting my dollar amounts. I could tap it off, which I'm going to do next. When I search by price, up comes all the property. So let's say I'm going to do 1.52, and I'll put a dash here. This is one of the very few times that you'll put a, a dash instead of a space, and I'm going to take it up to 2,700. So that would be 2.7. So my criteria is resident uh, is active properties. I put the dollar sign. I'm searching 1500 dash to 2700 space, and I'm happening to be in Birmingham. And when I hit enter, it tops it off for me. So when I search by everything, 2500 is my top, so no 2700s in this area, but I did get 1500 all the way up too. Now, of course, if I wanted to lock that in with a certain property type, I could put in the CEO for condo and get rid of the residential properties, and now here's just my condos in that area in that price range. Let's talk about if you're searching, and hopefully you are one day, a million or more. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Home and go back to my speed bar. And I'm going to type in Active, Residential, and I'm looking for a million or more. Let's look for five million or more. Let's go and have some fun here. I'll put a dollar sign, and I'll put 5,000 plus. And let's say I don't put in any area at all. Let's just see what's available. When I hit enter, I've got 17 properties in the entire MLS that's going for $5 million or more. Now, of course, if I knew my area code, if I wanted to type in my city, I could type in my city to lock that down. If I wanted to put in how many beds and baths or certain square footage, I could, of course, add that in. So with 17 results, but maybe I want it to do, oh, let's say 4,000 or more square feet, which I would hope it would have that. So SQFT, when I hit enter, I've refined my results even a little more. So now I'm down to 15 results. So again, easily you can uh, refine your search after you look at the criteria if you know the codes by going back up to the speed bar. So those are all the little tips and tricks when it comes to typing in your speed bar. And of course, once you have your results, nothing changes. You can, of course, highlight what you want, and then you could email that out to your customer. You could print it for your customer, print the flyers if you wish to. If you needed to do a CMA, that would be fine as well, and get driving directions. Of course, don't forget if you click on Refine, if you want it to check them off and just work with certain results, you can click Narrow, or if you check things off and you don't want them in your results, you can click on Discard and get rid of them there. If you wanted to save this, because this is always a search that you will constantly do, and you don't want to have to remember the codes that you typed in before or anything of that sort. This is like saving your search bar criteria or, or your speed bar search criteria. You check off what you want. You'd come on down to save, and you would click on new speed bar shortcut. And it would save it, of course, under my RCO and save searches. It would also, if you added it to your home page, it would save it to your home page under My Favorite Searches. So you, if you finally get it in just the way you want it, and you know that you're always going to do the search again, why not click on New Speed Bar Shortcut and save yourself the search? And you can run it at any time and get the latest results. Two more items I'd like to show you when doing the speed bar.
Let's talk about how to search for other agents. Let's talk about how to search for open houses as well. So I'm going to click on the home page and we're going to wait here till it updates. See, it happens to us too. We have to wait too sometimes. Well, while we're waiting, I just want to reiterate, don't forget, of course, to go to the help bar where you're going to find the speed bar documentation that we've been using today. Or you always can click on the little uh, gray question mark and you will get a shortcut of how to use this. Okay, let's get on back. There we go, finally. Okay. So, again, the last two uh, topics that I want to talk about when searching for the speed bar, searching for agents, searching for open houses. So, if I were looking up a particular agent, maybe I needed to call them and make an appointment. Maybe I needed their information to fill out the rest of the status sheet for the sale. I would be able to go to the speed bar, and here is the code for agents. You're going to put A-G space, and if you don't know their, their number, which you probably won't, you might know their last name, so you type it in, you hit enter, and up it comes. Now, if you're unsure about how to spell their last name, just put in a few letters that you're sure about and put an asterisk behind it, and the results will come up for you. And then you can look through your results, see who's who, and then be able to contact them this way. You can always backspace it out and look up another. And again, sometimes it will say, do you mean? If that's the case, you click on active and voila, they would come up for you. So the speed bar tries to help you out as much as possible that it can. And if you notice, I've never gone into criteria. I've stayed right here in the speed bar to type in my documentation. Haven't really gone anywhere else with the, uh, the search to try to um, update it or change it or do the results. I've always done all my changes in this, or add-ons to the speed bar. And the last one that I want to show you today is how to search for open houses. So when I go back and I click on home, certain couple codes that you have to use for the open houses and the way that you type in your criteria, very important with the dates. So in order to specify an open house, I'll put OH for open house, space, and if I wanted to do a date, I could type in the date. If I wanted to do a range, which I'm going to show you, let's see what's happening this weekend. Notice that I've put in the month, the date, and the full year. I'll put a dash. If I wanted to see that or more, I could put a plus sign, but I'm going to do a certain range. And then I'll top it off with this weekend. And I hit enter. Here are all the open houses that are scheduled for this weekend. My goodness. So there's 258. We're not going to get them all on the page. So here they all are. And of course you could sort. Perhaps you're looking for a certain price or a certain city. When you click on that, you can put them in order. And scroll down and find what you're looking for. And you can go to next. And search it there too. So far in the speed bar, it, there is no area designation or price designation. It is just searching for the open houses. So it's strictly by a date or a range of dates. And then you'll have to come and sort to find what you're looking for. So that will conclude today's uh, speed bar search. Uh, if you want to know more, you can always come and join us for our search class. We have that at least 
twice a month where we go through every single solitary search in the entire system just to get you comfortable using all the tips and tricks with uh, searching. Of course, all of us have searched before, but we can always get refined and um, learn things to help us work a little bit faster and, and smarter using the system. So if you'd like to join us for that class, again, it's called How to Search Everything in Real Comp, where we'll be going through the speed bar along with everything else during our search, and we hope to see you then. And we'll see you in two weeks for another topic on the webinar. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.